Hi, Nancy. Welcome, everyone. How is everybody doing? Excited to be with you here today. If you care to say hello, if you're new, if you're rejoining, if you're, um, yeah, joining because you like to join me, or you're joining because you are interested in reading cards, would love to hear. Hi, April. Welcome back. Hmm. I got up early and I've already had a nice day and it's only 11. Um, <laughs> so if you are new to me or you don't know, I am in Bali and it's 11 a.m. here. If you care to share where you are, where you're joining from. Um, and if you are new to me, don't forget to follow me here on Insight Timer. It's much appreciated. Please give a donation if you would like. Also appreciated. Um, this will also be as a live replay video on my YouTube channel, so please follow me there as well as Facebook and Instagram. I have um, all of my lives replays there and I've got them in a couple different playlists. <sighs> so if you, um, I've got like a general live stream playlist of my replays and I've got one on the conversations with God book series and I've got one on the There's Nothing Wrong With You uh, live series. So um, my next live stream is going to be on Conversations with God um, and I'm going to schedule another one for There's Nothing Wrong With You, those that book as well. And I'm also going to be scheduling um, my Saturday Night Live for this week and probably a couple weeks into the future. So, if you follow me, you'll be notified when those go live. Hi, Andrea. Monica, welcome back. Welcome, Bethany. Welcome back from New York. So, yes, this morning I was doing some play, not work, but play, on the curriculum for my new upcoming money mindset program that y'all have heard me talk about. There's some amazing, juicy, powerful exercises in there that, um, yeah, I'm creating the content for. <clears throat> and the ones that I was working on this morning were about, one was about um, discovering your earning ceiling. So it's like a meditative exercise where you imagine you make X amount of money per year and you see how that feels when you consider it. And it's interesting because what usually happens is, you know, you go like 5, 10, 20, 30, 50, 100, 250, a million. You, you know, consider all these different numbers of yearly income <clears throat> and then see how you feel and what your thoughts are in your body. When I did this exercise, it was very powerful. So one of the things to come, and um, I will be turning that into a meditation as well. Um, yeah, I know when I did that exercise, I had a lot of emotion come up. Because what can happen is you, you, you may have an earning ceiling where you feel like you can't earn beyond that number. And whenever I felt that, it was, you know, a sense of grief. And 
it was very unexpected and out of nowhere. So, um, you know, there's many layers to finances and money and wealth creation and abundance and earnings and all of that stuff. So <clears throat> I'm excited to be diving in. I do have a couple spots remaining for the program. We've got a number of lovely people I'm excited to have as a part of the program. And there's still room for a few more. So if you're ready to create results in your life and in your bank account, send me a message. You can also check my website. I have a page there called Money Mindset Program. You can find out more. So, hi Angela, welcome back, and thanks everybody for joining me yesterday and every day for my Bali 10-year anniversary, bali -versary. Um I made a reel last night and posted it. I just went back through like 10 years of memories, I mean, yeah, uh, in Bali, and um, pulled out you know, some highlights, um, and that was super fun, um, and just to see, you know, wow, all of the experience I, experiences I would have missed had I not chosen to take the leap and come to Bali, um, yeah, I'm so grateful, and even this morning on my, uh, story, Facebook and Insta story, I got up early, as I said, and I meditated outside on my porch here. You can see the nature. You can hear the nature. <laughs> you can hear the roosters and the cows. And, um, you know, at 6 a.m., the, the roosters are out. Thank God I wake up early automatically. <laughs> um but I had shared yesterday in the live about like my first morning in Bali waking up hearing this ethereal magical temple chanting music and I said that I hear that here and so I just happened to be out there at that time when um, you could hear the beautiful um, chanting from it's a recording um, from the Balinese priest and all of the birds and so yeah if that's interesting you can see that on my story so hi Jamie and JE Heather yes 10 years yeah so that was fun and fun to you know share my passion and my love for Bali with others regardless of if you ever come here or not you know it's just it's the energy of passion and appreciation and sharing and also about you know different cultures like it's a totally different culture of course um and you know the longer i'm out of the u.s just the more i have a distance to be able to i have a different um perspective now than i did 11 years ago when i left of you know, when you're, when you're immersed in something and you barely leave it, you don't know any different until you do and you go. And even so, I mean, I'll always be an American and have, you know, those ways of thinking and the mindset and the culture and the societal, you know, paradigms and things. And also, you know, the, the longer I'm separated from, I haven't even been there in five years, actually, I think it's coming up, like, in the next week or two, five years ago is when I left the U.S. the last time, I went on this amazing trip, I came from Mexico, I'd been living there, came home for nine days, so I was even only there for nine days when I was there, and then I went on a trip to Greece, Turkey for like two weeks and then I went to Singapore briefly and then Bali so it was a whirlwind of travel from like you know in a month's time I was like Mexico U.S. even I had a um, layover in Russia and Moscow <laughs> um, and then Greece Turkey Singapore Bali and actually, I landed here on my birthday 
back then, I remember, and I have the pics from that I was just seeing. Um, it was, it was an experience. So, hi, Ginger. Hi, Shauna. Welcome, Leslie. Heather, great question. So, I always tell myself when I'm a U.S. dollar millionaire, I'll live in the U.S. <laughs> because for where I want to live, even a million dollars isn't even really enough, but it would, I'd be able to make do <laughs> if I was a U.S. dollar millionaire because I would li love to live in um, Venice, Santa Monica area, um, Southern California, or Sedona. I say Sedona, I've been there, but living there, I don't know. I would need to check it out. It's very powerful. Um, yeah, so when I create that, and if I choose, then maybe I would live there again. <laughs> so, you know, one thing I didn't say yesterday because I was talking about Bali, before we jump into the tarot, which we will do, one of my favorite things of living as an expat is although I've, you know, even Bali, I've been here for 10 years um, off and on now. Um, you know, I've lived in Thailand for three or four years total. I've lived in Mexico for like two years total. Um, even so, even though it's familiar, I, n I never get bored. I never feel like I totally sleepwalk in my life when I'm living in other countries. Even though I, I, you know, I speak the language here, I know it very, very well. There's still a sense of aliveness from living in other countries that I just don't have in the U.S. And I'm sure maybe if I move to a new city, that might be there for a while. But for me, my experience of living in the U.S., until I came out of it, it was like everything was known. And also because of the nature of the way it is there with you know, everything is a chain, everything is asphalt, or many places, at least where I was living, you know, a lot of my life. It's like suburbs, it's just, um, you know, gas stations, McDonald's, Walmart, blah, blah, all that stuff. And I'm not making a political statement, I'm just sharing my experience, and it's just that it's so easy to just sleepwalk through life there for me. Now, I can, you know, it doesn't have to be, and if I go back and I create a different experience, yes, I could do that. It's easier to just be awake for me when I am other places. And I'm also, like, I'm an astrology fan, and I wonder if some of that has to do with all the Sagittarius in my chart. I can tell that story if I want, and I do, so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, if I was, like, total Capricorn, Taurus, something, something, you know, never, never go, stay put, like, maybe, maybe I would love that, but I love the stimulation. I even have it, my, how, my son is in the ninth house of Sagittarius in Gemini. My moon is in Sagittarius, you know, I've got other things there so I just yeah maybe it's that oh Kieran you brought up your um astrology before I even saw your comment how interesting you're rooted in your home mm. July cancer yeah and too like we have a whole chart you know and like no know, knowing my whole chart helps me understand myself more than just oh you know my sun sign and I know you know that um but if I were to just go by I'm a Gemini sun 
I don't, you know, that it, this, there, there's more depth to it there. So, ooh, awesome, Leslie. Amazing. You went to Bali in 2019, and as a result, because of the inspiration, you're building a Bali inspired home in Austin. So, you know, there's all kinds of possibilities. I'm so glad you joined in and shared that. You know, you don't, it doesn't mean <laughs> you don't have to not live wherever you can create it, wherever you go, which I did say, but that would be another aspect of like, okay, if you travel somewhere and if you're inspired and you don't want to or can't or choose not to live wherever that may be, bring it with you, create it in your home. Um, awesome. Oh, interesting. So, Taurus son and married a Sag. Ooh, yeah, nice. So, Leslie, were you a flight attendant or worked for, like, the airline on the ground? Because Taurus, I know, of course, we have a whole chart, but just Taurus alone, you know, is quite grounded and home-bodied. So, okay, you worked at the airport. Cool. Hi, Britt. Awesome. So, great to get into all this. And hi, Mark. Hola. So, tarot. Tarot and oracle cards. Any kind of cards of divination. I know my regulars here know me, know about how I do cards, have experienced that, and I know many of you have your own cards, maybe our readers, maybe our professionals. Um, so as we dive into the topic today, I want to hear from you where you're at and what, what you would like help with, if anything. Um, is there anybody here that wants guidance specifically on reading cards, certain aspects? Are you just interested in the idea of it? Is it a mystery to you? Are you just here because you enjoy being in my presence, which is fine too? <laughs> hey, Lady Peacock. Um, you know, any and all of the above are welcome, of course. And also, you know, I want to provide value. So if there's something that's like a mystery around the cards or if you don't know where to start and you want to know where to start or if you want to read them differently or anything like that um yes jamie yes 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 that's a great point and i love that you that remember that and brought that back in i will definitely speak to that um so, and if you were here the other day, like this live stream um, kind of unfolded organically because we were talking or talking about cards and I, I was actually sharing as part of my Bali journey, you know, nine years ago is when I um, found cards or they found me. And if you did miss the brief story, you know, I had had um, a psychic reading from a card reader slash intuitive and he had told me that he saw in my spread or whatever it was that I, I would be like serving people in a way with like psychic and intuitive abilities that could include tarot cards. And at the time he said that that was so never anything I, had considered in any way I had wanted it and wished for it like as a hope and a dream like that I would somehow just have some sort of abilities you know years before but you know I just thought well I don't have any abilities so that's my lot in life and that's okay it, I didn't have a bunch of energy around it but when he told me this I was like that just felt so far-fetched and, you know, out of nowhere, and, like, I didn't really believe him, because I just was like, ah, this isn't, this isn't true. <laughs> Me, I can, you know, have abilities, intuitive abilities, and read cards, 
Um, it was just alien and foreign to me. So, and then one day, it was actually in April 2015, I just remember that because I lived in Bali, you know, about a year at that point. I just woke up one Sunday and it was just like, go get tarot cards. Like after he told me that, that was in January of that year. I didn't like go out. I just didn't do anything about it. And then one day I woke up and was like, it's time. And I went and got a deck. And um, it just, as I said, you know, when I talked about this recently, it was just amazing how, you know, my idea of how I thought cards worked is that it would be some deep mystery to solve that would be like super complicated and require a lot of analysis or, you know, com like complicated putting all these pieces and parts together. And it would take a lot of like intellect and, and, um, it would be hard and difficult to figure it out. That was just my natural way of thinking. And then I got my first deck and it came with a thing with a spread. Um, and if you don't know, a tarot spread is the way the cards are laid out. They have different meanings depending on where, it's like a map basically. Um, and you know, there's a million different types of spreads. So. You know, I, I didn't even know what that was. I get this little tarot kit, and it's good. It had this little map or this, uh, it was like a piece of paper, and you could put the cards on top. It was a five-card spread called the Cross of Truth, and I can share that, April. Um, and I just did it, and it was just like magic. It felt like magic to see just, wow, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to say a mantra or try or effort. It, it didn't take any skill. It, it, it just was like, and I mean, I don't know, maybe this is how it is for everybody. I can only speak for myself, but I had these imaginings that it would take all of these things. And it was just like, wow, bam, the cards were there. Of course, I didn't know them what the tarot cards meant but i had a book and i could look up each card and as i'm looking them up i'm just like wow you can't make this shit up as i always say <laughs> and i just it just felt like wow this message is right here i don't need to put a lot of effort into learning to get somewhere out into the future to be able to understand this the understanding is here so that's how my journey with it has been. And of course, the learning of the cards. Um, hey, Wendy, nice to see you again. Hi, Duchess. Um, mm, thanks, Bethany, for your comment. Um, yeah, so if you don't know, there's tarot cards and there's oracle cards. Tarot cards are like similar to a deck of playing cards. There's 52 cards, there's, you know, four suits. There's, you know, diamonds and hearts and spades and clubs and it's ace through king, right? It's very set. That's it. That's a deck of cards. You don't add to it, you don't take away from it. Tarot cards are the same. There are, now, I, I always get confused if it's 72 or 78. I think it's 78. But there is um, card 0 to 21 or 22 is one part of the tarot deck. And then there's another part of the tarot deck that is 40 cards. So the first part is called the Major Arcana, and it starts with card zero, which is the Fool. So the whole tarot journey starts with this Fool card. And it's a card, the number is zero because it's a part of card of possibilities and new beginnings. So the first 21, 22 cards, thank you, Lisa, 78 cards, 
um, is the fool's journey. So the fool starts out as this fool, this innocent, young energy, full of possibility. Everything exists. Everything's possible. And then he goes on this journey that ends with the world card which is a card of completion um and through that is you know a whole journey so those cards are called the major arcana and they're um, much more powerful energies like um life event sort of energies not day-to-day -day mundane energies so that's one part of the tarot deck then the other 40 cards are a little bit similar to playing cards in that there's four suits of 10 cards each. And y'all have all heard the swords, the cups, the wands, the pentacles, and it's ace to 10. Oh, wait, so that means there's, no, 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 10 cards, yeah. <laughs> so those are like more um, more subtle energies or more like daily energies, more um, sometimes can be supportive energies that give clarity um, and insights. So that's the actual tarot deck. Every tarot deck is going to be like that. There might be different artwork. They might call the, the you know, the suit of cups could be called... Um, discs it could be called in the Osho Zen tarot it's called rainbows um so you know the art can be different there can be a little bit of like getting creative with the the meanings and the names and things but they all follow that so oracle cards are completely different in that they can be whatever they want them to be there can be as many different cards, you know, there can be 20, there can be 200, whatever, and they can just, it can be a free for all, basically. So I have here, as y'all well know, the Beloved Light Sears deck. So this is a straight up tarot deck, 100% tarot, 78 cards. <laughs> and, you know, that's what we have here. You know, the art is amazing. It's totally updated. Um, and, you know, even with this, like the Five of Swords, on this, in this deck, the swords are these birds. One, two, three, four, five. Right? So, you know, you can get creative. The Ten of Cups here is, um, they're like singing bowls. Um, Queen of Wands. Oh, wait, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I knew that math wasn't adding up. So there's ace through 10, and then there's also um, page, knight, queen, and king. Okay, that makes sense now. I've totally spaced on these. So these are um, part of that, kind of like a regular card playing deck. Um but uh, these are called court cards. So in tarot readings, these can be actual people. So if you pull this card, there might be like a wise woman or a female energy embodied as a person coming in to give you new ideas about whatever the thing is you're drawing the spread on. Ooh, awesome, Bethany. Well, this is perfect. Maybe this is your sign to dig in to start using them so um yeah if so somebody else april brought up spreads so so that's the card so oracle cards it's a free-for-all it's a creative free-for-all process um where are my my work your light deck so these are oracle cards and y'all know this so i don't even know how many are in here 44 so for whatever reason the author chose to make 44 of these and they are just 
messages, you know, protection, um, leap, the age of light, council of light. The deck is called work your light. So it's themed around that. So there's, there can, these can kind of be anything. Angel cards, many people have heard of those. So as y'all know from being with me in here, what I usually like to do, and Bethany, you can do this as well, is, um, you know, I pick like a main card, like a, a card that's a main theme. And so let's just do that right now and I'll demonstrate and we'll get a reading. Um, and so as you shuffle, especially when you're new at this, you know, um, you can have an intention, you can say it out loud, you can pray first, you can ask, you know, spirit to guide you and all of that. If you want, you can set your intentions. You don't have to, you can, you can ask a question in your mind out loud. Um, you know, I, I don't even do it consciously, at least not in this way, you know, if it's a one-on-one -on -one reading and somebody has a specific question, you know, that's quite clear. Um, one thing is that I learned is you, you want to shy away from being like, should or shouldn't I do this or that? Um, because that's really disempowering. I don't even know where I read that, but if anybody does that, I would invite you to, to work with a different style of question, which is what is the energy around me doing this or that or not doing this or that? What's the energy surrounding this situation or this person or whatever it is? Instead of like, you know, should I go to Bali <laughs> or whatever? What's the energy around me going to Bali, for example. Um, so, but back to the way I do this very simple spread where I do combine the Oracle and the Tarot. I like to use this and I like to use like Oracle decks for like the main theme of the reading. So let's see what our main theme is for this. And I'll just, you know, ask what's a message that Whoever is listening to this live, if you're seeing the replay, like, and this is collective, so it is for everyone here that chooses to receive it. Um, and that's a whole other discussion, you know, collective readings, but we'll keep it simple. Okay, so this card just popped out. I don't think you saw that but it literally popped out of the deck. So sometimes that'll happen. Some readers will wait until a card pops out. I don't do that. I shuffle. I mean, y'all have seen me. Oop, <laughs> there's another one. Y'all have seen me do this a million times, right? And sometimes I'll be talking and I'll shuffle for a while. And then I'll notice my mind's like, okay, it's time. And then, I, and then if a card doesn't pop out, what I will do is I will cut the deck and just take take one and that kind of because the mind can get all it'll for me i'll start getting in my head and being like is this right is this not blah 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 so um so these are and i have net oh my gosh this is a card i have never seen and y'all know how often i've used this deck i have never seen this card anna the grandmother of jesus i didn't even know this was in the deck has anybody that used this deck know this card? Like, wow, I thought I've seen them all. So it says, Anna, grandmother of Jesus, seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. So that was the one that popped out. So for me, the way I see this is because it's this very specific um, being, Anna, the grandmother of Jesus, I'm, I feel like that energy, the embodiment, you know, that spirit, her, she's here, like, supporting us um, with her energy. She looks amazing with this artwork. It's even got, like, the sphinx in the background from Egypt. Oh, wait, over here. Yeah. And there's a lighthouse. 
So you can look at if like, I don't know this card, you know, this has a very clear message. So that makes it pretty <laughs> easy. But even, even if you're new at tarot and you, and you pull a card, like, yes, you can look up the meaning of the 10 of cups. And also you get to use your intuition and tune into the image on the card along with, you know, what other energies there are, if you're reading for a specific person and trust whatever's coming. Um, so the other card that popped out was get grounded. I know we've seen that one. Empaths, highly sensitives connect with nature. So this was Bethany as I, I was kind of sharing this for you to start using spreads or using spreads with tarot and one that I like, you know, I, I pull one card two popped out. So this is, this is the main theme, you know, this energy of, so for, for a person, for you all receiving this reading right now, this is your message from Anna. It's time for you to lay foundations, you know, trust in divine timing, trust in a divine plan, seeding the light. And also you can look at the guidebooks for these oracle cards are really rich with reading the descriptions of these cards. So you can do that to learn more about them. And y'all know with me, sometimes I will feel called to read them and sometimes not. I'm not feeling called to share these with you if you want to, you can look them up, you know, in addition, because it's got the info at the bottom, you know, it's pretty easy to pick up on it. And sometimes I feel called to, to read more. So I feel like this is saying seeding the light and get grounded. So for y'all, it's like this coming into, you know, taking in, allowing divine light, connection to source, whatever that is also earth energy and grounding into that and that remembering like we are this multi-dimensional being jack cornfield always says in his meditations you know you're sitting in meditation halfway between heaven and earth so it's like we are this you know positioned in this way in this human body in this experience and all to have access to all these dimensions and realities if we choose to put our attention there. So that's what it's saying, like open up to the divine, ground that in to your body, right? So then I draw tarot cards usually for clarification. Usually I use the light seers. Um, sometimes I use the Osho Zen tarot. So Osho Zen tarot is a tarot deck. It has one extra card that's Osho and it's called the master. So it's a, you know, a little bit different. And then, um, you know, it's got these words at the bottom and this is like the, um, instead of saying ace of cups or whatever, this little symbol shows what it is. So this is, um, swords and I think it's clouds in this deck and it might be a knight because the way that little arrow is showing. So you can look that up in the book. But um, for me personally, like the Oracle cards, um, I feel like, like what I just, what I just said, right? I saw the message. I opened up. I gathered and shared what else was coming through around that. And, and I'm, if this is just me, you know, maybe there's some expert, well, I'm sure there's some expert readers that, <laughs> you know, uh, can probably dive in, you know, and, and into it like a ton of stuff from that. But for me, like it's a bit of a limited message. Like to me, there's not much else to get from that. When I bring in the clarifying card so you can draw clarification cards to clarify the message and get more information, then that expands the original message even more. 
and you can make up whatever spreads you want. You know, I've played around with even like a, a, a story. I'll just start, and this I would say is more like advanced, um, not for beginners, but I'll just, you know, I've done this before and in one-on-one -on -one readings, I'll just start drawing, you know, I mean, I shuffle and everything, but I'll just start pulling cards. Okay, card one is the star and then Oh, next is this and that. And it tells a story and it tells a journey. So that can be fun. Um, so, you know, in this application here right now, um, hi, Summerstar, EI. Um, And then, okay, just reading back over some comments here. Bethany. Nice. For me, I don't see much distinction between tarot and oracle. Aside from me personally, I feel that oracle is a bit more limited because it's very specific. For tarot, I feel like there's these cards are a launch pad for much deeper insights and intuitions to come. And although they, they all have a general theme, I think the combination of the artwork, you know, depending on the deck, like to me, the artwork is a portal, you know, if, if it's something I resonate with. I've had decks where, ooh, I was like, ooh, that's an awesome deck. It looks amazing. I'll get it. But then when I worked with it, it was like mm, the art didn't draw me in and open up my intuition. And that's kind of what I feel for me, what is lacking with this deck here. Although the art is amazing and beautiful. Um, I feel like these words, and maybe this is the same with the Oracle, the fact that it's got, you know, these very definitive, um, labels I feel like it boxes my mind in sometimes and it's it's these are quite static messages energetically not that there's anything wrong with that <laughs> um, so it's like a combination of the art and knowing about the card and the meaning and you know if you're just starting, and this is what I did, is I would pick a card, and I mean, I'd never really seen these before, and then I would look and see, oh, Six of Swords, and, and read the theme, and then just over time, I memorized them, you know. Um, so let's see uh, what else we have. So like right now, I'm just kind of being open, being a little bit blank, being in like, don't know mind or questioning. And sometimes, well, I'm doing it right now. I'll talk when I do this and that's fine. I think if you're new, you know, it's best that you get still and quiet. So like, look at this one. This is one that you can pull out. Um, it didn't pop out and come out, but it, it's almost there. So what my mind does sometimes is then I make it into a head trip. Like, and even right now it's like, do I take it or do I not? And it's like, just take the damn thing. <laughs> and guess what y'all? I know many of you were here the other day. There it is again. Um, so you can take ones that kind of pop up like that and pull them out. Or if they totally come out on, you know, onto the floor or whatever, and that happens. So I kind of do that, not expecting it, but I just, I shuffle until I'm ready. Until it feels right. And then I'll stop. And then I always cut 
and you, there's no wrong way to do this. This is just my method. Some people put them in three piles, put them back together. Some people, I like to, when I'm doing an in-person reading, I love to spread out all the cards in a fan and tell the client pick cards because usually I'm remote. So it's so fun when I'm in person, you know, when they can pick their own cards. So, hi, Nikki. Um, so these are the clarifications on, you know, the message, the, the main message from the Oracle cards that I shared. And it's about death, rebirth, the death card, and the five of wands. So remember earlier I talked about major and minor arcana, the fool's journey, card zero to 21 or 22. This is a major arcana card. This is a very powerful energy. It's not a mundane energy. It's not a day-to-day -day energy. It's an overarching theme. It's a, you know, a big deal sort of an energy. This five of wands is one of the more subtle day-to-day -day energies. Um, and, you know, as I, so this is the minor arcana, major arcana, minor arcana. And, um, you know, each suit, the wands, the cups, the swords, the pentacles, has their own energies and all of that as well. So learning about the four suits, the energies of them, along with learning about, you know, what does this five of wands mean? I mean, even if you look at it, what do y'all think? It's pretty, I mean, it's got a pretty clear message there, right? So, I'm going to, I don't know, clean this little thing here. I don't know if that's, you know, it's, maybe it's just the light. <laughs> hi, Nikki, Laura. Oh, I already said hi to Nikki. I'm so glad this is helpful, Leslie. This is my first time doing this. And it's interesting because I don't even perceive myself as, and I'm not saying I'm an expert, but it's like, I don't even think I know how much I know, if that makes sense. It, it, I've just been a student and I've just been using them. I've never considered teaching it or explaining it aside from just giving the readings, but it's like, wow, actually I do know a lot. I mean, I've been doing it a while, so yeah, awesome. So. So it's like kind of giving y'all a reading as well as showing you kind of my process, right? And I feel like also in light of our reading the other day too, this is a theme for humanity, of course, and also those of us that are on the journey of awakening and expanding and evolving um, in the spiritual journey is a process of death and rebirth. So you know, these energies that I described earlier, I mean, I got kind of like, I mean, I guess it was an image, although it, it wasn't super tangible, but in my, I guess you could say my third eye or my sixth sense or that, you know, inner knowing that comes from the sixth chakra, um, you know, I, I experience my intuition a lot in images. And when I do the ancestral clearing, when I do the Reiki, usually one-on-one, -on -one, and y'all have heard me say this and y'all have experienced it, especially if you've done sessions one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I see stories, I see happenings, I see unfoldings, I see stuff. And so even with this, although I didn't even consciously know it until I'm explaining it to you now, but I did. I had this image of like a person sitting in Lotus with, and I mean, I explained it, right? Like this portal opening in the light and then also the energy of the grounding. So that came through as a result of these cards and tuning into what that means for y'all as a collective. So 
the clarification on that is, is like a transformation for you when you open up to this more, when you, oh yeah, like, look, this is, <laughs> that is, I mean, that wasn't the same being, but like that same position, that's what I was seeing in my mind's eye. Um, yeah. When you open up, it's like, and because of this, you know, stuff happening in the sky and everything and the planets and all of this stuff, right? Like this light that's coming in, it's like um, we're getting an, another upgrade. And so the best way you can utilize this for your own rebirth and transformation is to remain grounded. Um, then we bring in this card, the Five of Wands. So sometimes I don't have a clear idea of how these fit together until, you know, there's a part of my mind that's like, oh shit, what does that mean? <laughs> if I'm just, I'm just flowing like totally uncensored here. Um, thank you, Lisa. Uh, it's like, okay, then how does this five of wands energy fit into that? Hmm. For me, I feel like I don't, I step over the hesitation or the fear or the doubt that might come in from, you know, the ego and the small part of the mind and just go with what I think it might mean. And what happens is me just stepping through that. It's like I overcome a little hiccup or resistance or hurdle and then the message becomes clear as I just speak into what I'm feeling it might mean. So if you're reading for others or if you're reading for yourself, you can apply this. For me, what I think this means in regards to this reading is there could be internal or external and or external conflicts i feel like a lot of this is speaking to internal mental conflicts um and also there's other cards in the tarot deck that would better uh, explain that like the um five of swords that we saw earlier with the guy like this with his head um but this is the card that came out for its own reason, right? This is a card, the general meaning is like petty competition um, or like petty dramas. Because in the original tarot, these people are like, and they are, they are in here too, but you can't see it as much. They're like teenagers or they're like young guys, right? And that's what these are. They have these sticks. They're just like creating petty drama within themselves. You know, nobody's getting hurt. Nobody's wounded for real. It's just like distraction. And it's like competition. Like they're reaching. Look, he's, he's, um, they're, they're trying to reach for this wand. And wand energy, you know, here's the wands. There's five of them. And this is an energy of, it's masculine energy, it's fire, the element of fire. So it's passion, it's creativity. Um, and in this sense, it's like, how, is, how is, are those energies being affected by this competition style energy? So that's why I'm like, this could be people outside of you, like when you up level, when you're um, expanding and evolving and becoming who you're creating yourself to be in this world. You know, people might have shit to say about it. They might feel threatened by you. Um, so that could be the meaning for like something external. The internal meaning could be whatever drama and conflict you're creating in your own head about this transformation and this rebirth for you and to not get dragged down by that. So that's the reading. <laughs> um, 
So that's a very like loose spread. So I will show you the first spread that I got when I got that first tarot deck. And I'll, I'll just do a very quick one because it's time to go and I also need to go. And if you want to dive deeper into this, send me a message. Um, if there's enough interest, you know, I may offer something official around this if it's helpful. And of course, also, I offer one-on-one -on -one readings. I offer Reiki, ancestral clearing, spiritual life coaching, Reiki trainings, and all of that stuff. So if you are wanting a new thread, uh, uh, a new spread to use for yourself or with others, um, this one's called the Cross of Truth. Um, and before that, Jamie, I know you had that question. So the other day I mentioned this and then we'll do this spread. Um, that over the years, I, whenever I would do readings for myself and I really would only ever do readings on myself if I was really attached and had a lot of energy around something. I'm not the type that does a daily card pull or something like that. When I have done readings in the past, it's because I was like really wanted to know and had a lot of energy around it. So I feel like that also influenced the cards. It wasn't just a daily read or something. Um, but what I found was that when I would like, and I was really like wanting to hear a certain thing, like, oh, you know, I want to go back to Thailand and I, and I really want to go. So I'm wanting the cards to confirm that I would then seem to pull. And this happened over time, like years of noticing, like, wait a minute. Like I started to pick up on this. The cards would tell me what I wanted to hear because I feel like I was influencing the answer with my energy. The same as um, the other day when we talked about this, somebody said that about the pendulum. Like I feel like for me asking my own questions about stuff and even for others, sometimes I influence what I want the answer to be too much. And maybe that's my own stuff that I get to work through <laughs> and like clean up my energy around. But um, yeah, so I used to use, and I still do rarely there, I will use a website, I will use an app. Um, there's an Osho Zentero app. Um, the apps give me, of course, an unbiased answer. Um, you know, others may not have that experience, I'm just sharing my own. So thank you, Bethany, and I hope that helps if anybody had questions about that. So this Cross of Truth is five cards. So you want to shuffle, and if you have a specific question, um, and you can do all of this with Oracle as well. I mean, I don't know, it might be a little confusing, but um, yeah, I mean, there's no rules, you can try it. For me, I would want to use tarot with any sorts of spreads, but hey, I'm open to being wrong and learning something new. Hi, Gary. Oop. Okay, card popped out onto the floor. So it's five cards in a cross. So the bottom card is, um, now I'm going to, oh my gosh, try to remember. I've known this spread for years now all of a sudden. Okay, it's, we'll just say, and I'm going to trust that I'm right, your current position. So most tarot spreads start out like that. Where are you at right now um, in regards to whatever the question was? Now, another thing with spreads and layouts, so it would be like this, like card one, two, three, four, five. Sometimes I draw them all face down until I'm finished because sometimes I feel like if I'm, pulling them and I'm looking at them and I'm then my mind is making up stories about what it sees. It might influence the rest of the cards as they come out. So a lot of times I will draw them all face down and once they're all on the table, I'll turn them all over. So that could be something you could try. 
but the way I'm doing this here, I'm just doing it. So this first card is, and I didn't really even ask anything, so, and I'm not really going to give a reading because um, it's time for me to go, but you can intuit whatever you choose from this, and it's just a general reading. I didn't ask a question or anything. So if we do this again, we'll see. Maybe it'll be different. So we have card one. Now you can just take card two, three, four, five if you want. I don't do that because I don't feel it. I shuffle. Well, it depends. But right now I feel like I'm just shuffling again. And see then, look, I'm, I'm doing that. Card two. So the card two in the middle is hopes or fears. So what do you hope or what do you fear from whatever the question is or whatever you're reading about? And if you want to know this, um, send me a message if you want to try this one and you're not getting it all or you can watch the replay on YouTube. So card three on the right side as you're looking is energies that are supporting you. And then card four, oop, it popped out. Ah. This is hard to reach. Energies that are opposing. And then usually many tarot spreads end with the outcome, which is, you know, what, why we do this. Okay, this one popped out. Oh my gosh. You can't make this shit up. It's the same as the death card that we just got. <laughs> okay, so this is a great little example here. So here you can see these are both tarot decks. These are both card 13. And in tradition, like the straight original tarot, it's the death card. In Light Seers, it's called Death Rebirth. In Osho Zen, it's called Transformation. But so you can see how different um, decks, you know, although these are both tarot, they have a different essence and you may get different messages from these. But isn't that, I mean, you can't make this shit up. <laughs> That's your outcome card for this spread. So, so out, if you could see it, it's like, you know, an X. So where you're at currently is feeling like an outsider and I'm just going to breeze through these, right? Um, and where you want to be is a place of trust. You don't want to feel like an outsider because usually that feels like you're alone, right? Energies that are supporting you, sorrow. So isn't this interesting? So perhaps you need to allow yourself to feel whatever this little child feels. Um, the other thing to say about reading these cards, because of the flavor of the deck, if I was reading this as the original tarot card, it's the Five of Pentacles, I would be giving a completely different message right now. The Five of Pentacles, to me, is, it's similar, and I see why the art and the words are here, but... I'm, if I was looking at an original Five of Pentacles card, I wouldn't be saying what I'm saying. So the deck can really influence the message. Um, yeah, so what's supporting you, the energies that are supporting you, is to allow yourself to feel the sorrow. Energies that are... Um, holding you back or challenging you is letting go. So I feel like you're not letting go of this. I feel like this has to do with like inner child wounds. You want to trust, you want to let go, you want to move on, you're coming up against stuff. Allow yourself to feel the sorrow. You know, and work with this energy of letting things go and trusting I feel like it's the not letting go that is 
um, the challenge here. And then the outcome, as, oops, as we see, is the wonderful transformation. So, you know, even if somebody's never read cards, like if you pull this, and if you know like what position the cards are in, you know, with this deck especially, it's you, quite e easy or simple for you to create, you know, the reading from that. I didn't talk about reversals, so I don't use reversals, which means if the card's upside down, I used to do that. And then after a few years, I'm just like, I don't need to overcomplicate things in my mind. I found myself second guessing myself and just maybe I'm just not that good of a reader that, you know, I, I get my mind wrapped up and get confused. But for me, I have found I don't do reversals. If something does show up reversed, then I'm like, wow, okay, that, because I, I don't do it, I don't like consciously, I'm like, ah, are all the cards upright? But they're all generally upright. So if one does pop out reversed, I'm like, okay, I'm going to really look at that. So let me know how this helped you. Send me a message, join my group, Natalie's Healing Circle. You can share in there. You can reach out to me one-on-one. -on -one. Y'all know what I do and who I help and how I work with people. Um, I will see you all for Conversations with God, which is amazing and mind-blowing and life-changing. I'm going to be reading. Um, yeah, we're going to try a format of me reading the book um, moving forward because that was fun and people liked it. So, and I liked it too. So I will see you in like two days for that. And this was great. And if, you know, if you want more of these, I mean, this was super fun for me. I'm so glad it was helpful, Bethany and others. So if it's fun and helpful, we'll keep it up. So much love from Bali. Namaste. See you next time.